In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Illumine our hearts, O Master, who lovest mankind with the pure lights, light of thy divine knowledge, and open the eyes of our mind to the understanding of thy gospel teachings. Implant in us also the fear of thy blessed commandments, that trampling down all carnal desires, we may enter upon a spiritual manner of living, both thinking and doing such things as are well-pleasing unto thee, for thou art our sanctification and illumination. And unto thee we ascribe glory to the Father, and to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and ages. ages. Amen. Um, good evening. Um, welcome back to our uh, Bible study on uh, the book of uh, the Acts of the Apostles. God willing, tonight we'll see if we can cover chapter 3 and 4 uh, as much as we can of these two chapters. Um, the first part is uh, uh, chapter 3, verse 1 to 11. Um, if you have the Orthodox Study Bible and anybody interested in reading it, would, would anybody be interested? In the Orthodox sure. Study Bible. You said chapter yes, and help some from three. One, one to ten first, please. One to ten. Yes. Okay. Evangelism, a lame man is healed. Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms from those who entered the temple who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms. And fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Then they knew that it was he who, who sat begging alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Mm. Beautiful. So uh, now, you know, as we know, the Acts of the Apostle, it's actually in Arabic, we say Amel Russell, right? So Acts of the Apostle, the work of the Apostle, what uh, they uh, what they started to do right after they received the, uh, the Holy Spirit on Pentecost. So this is one of the first stories that we learn about um, uh, of the work and the Acts of the Apostles. In this case, here we have Peter and John. Peter and John, who were... Uh, walking together to the temple uh, in the at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. Can anybody remember what the ninth hour what re represents by today's time? Three o'clock. Three o'clock. Three o'clock. Right? Nicolette and Angela. Yeah, three o'clock. The ninth hour is the three o'clock. The first hour is six a.m. The third hour is nine a.m. The uh, sixth hour is 12 p.m. and the ninth hour is 3 p.m. Okay, um, it's something interesting that we we see here. Now Peter and John went together to the temple at the hour of prayers. So they still the Christian, well, the people, the follower of Jesus. They, in a way, they did their own, um, they get, you know, they get together, they do their own prayers, but also what we notice from here, they, they still went to the temple. They still went and paid the prayers or prayed the prayers that they've always done before Jesus. You know, so the prayers of uh, the Jewish uh, uh, religion, right? And it's an interesting thing that here in the end, um, uh, um like some people might wonder, why are you, you know, why are they doing this? You know, now they follow Jesus. Why do they need to go, you know, to the temple and pray? But why wouldn't they? Because at the end of the day, in the eyes of Christians, it is a, a it's a uh, Judaism. Uh, Christianity is a, a, a um, continuation of the du Jewish uh, uh, practice. So why not read the Psalms? Why not, you know? 
we still, as Orthodox now, we still have the Old Testament, right? We still rely on the Old Testament. We still, it's it's a big part of our uh, relig- of uh, our spiritual life, our liturgical life. So it was evident that the the, the disciples and the apostles and all the followers of Jesus to keep uh, going to the temple. Now we'll see later. Um, and later in the history of the church that we started developing our own thing little by little till we have what we have now. Um, But especially right in the beginning, they haven't yet gathered, put things together. They're still working on establishing, um, you know, establishing the new church of, uh, you know, of uh, of Christ, uh, the new, um, uh, uh, how I can say this, uh, the new understanding of Judaism, the new, um, uh, actually, and that's why we say we, we never uh, reject the Old Testament because we we see it in the eyes of the New Testament. We see it in the eyes of Jesus Christ, right? Um, but that's why, you know, when the, the, the disciples will go to the uh, uh temple if they're reading from david if they're reading from the psalms as all the jews do of course you know for the jew they might think they're still waiting for the uh, um, uh, messiah but for for the christians the ones who uh, now believe in jesus and they're like oh that was that is fulfilled now not good i'm reading the prayer that i just witnessed you know a few days ago or you know a few years ago so it's not something. Um, it's not uh, um, uh, something uh, like shocking that we hear that Peter and John or the disciples uh, went to the temple in the hour of prayer, right? And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, but was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful. Okay, um, they saw somebody who was who was not able uh, um, to walk. Um, uh, the, the temple, the gate of the temple, one of the gates for the temple. It's called Beautiful. Um, it is called Beautiful. They say it's just because because architecturally and art, in like the the art, uh, you know, uh, the way it's made and how much uh, beautiful. It's a beautiful architecture and beautiful art, and that's why it was just giving the name um, uh, Beautiful. Uh, to ask alms for those who enter the temple, right? Everybody that was that was the place uh, in a way. Um, that was the place for beggars or people who are in need. Um, it's always that it's the time of Matthew finishing his bath and running here. It's okay. Um, uh, it is the common place for uh, for people who could not work or could not uh, support themselves to um, uh, ask others to put them every day right in the big, right at the entrance of uh, the temple or any of the gates so they can beg for money hoping that people will feel bad for them uh, and help them and this person that's how he uh, he was begging uh, and then when seeing uh, Peter and John about to go in the temple asked for alms and fixing his eyes on him with John Peter said look at us why did he say look at us any idea Oh, you said, look at us. <laughs> you know what he's anticipating? Meaning he doesn't have anything to give. Yeah, exactly, Sally. They are poor. They are barely can afford anything. You know, they're just poor people. And he's looking at him he's like, look at me. Like, what can I give you? But that also shows you how desperate um, uh, the guy who could not wake, uh, walk, how desperate he was just asking for from anybody. Um He's asking from anybody. So, but uh, Paul Peter tells him, well, look at us, <laughs> you know, what can we give you? So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them, right? Even this, like, there's, okay, good, good, good. I'm going to get something, knowing how they look and the way they dressed poorly, you know, they're just poorly. Um, I mean, in a way, what we see probably now, like, God bless them, some of the homeless people, like, with barely any clothes on that's probably how uh, peter and john were wearing i mean barely any clothes on just to cover you know themselves um because they were just poor people um uh so he gave them his attention expecting to receive something from them then peter said silver and gold i do not have but i but what i do have i give you in the name of jesus christ of nazareth rise up and walk and he took him by the right hand and lifted him up 
and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength, right? And then we know, so they healed him, right? But what is the difference between when Jesus heals and when now we see Peter or his disciples heal? What is the difference? What do you think is the difference? They have to heal. Oh, go ahead. Hannah. Go ahead, Hannah. Hannah. No, no, go ahead. <laughs> uh, I wanted to say they, they heal in the name of Jesus. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Jesus never says it never said in the name of my father or in the name of so and so. No, he had the full authority, he has the full authority, right? But the Peter could not say in my name, right, you know, stand up or something. No, he had to say in the name of Jesus, you know, in the name of Jesus, in the name of our Lord. I command you to raise. He need. He has to do that. He has to because it's not not his own power, but the power that given to him from our Lord, right? And then, um, and, uh, and of course, he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately, his feet and ankle bones received strength. Don't you think it's a bit, um, a bit, a bit kind of like a strange? Not strange, but it was like very descriptive, you know, for. Uh, you know, for it to say, um, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. He could have just said, and he stood up and started walking. Do you know why, why, you know, this, you know, it's been written like this? I mean, church, church was assumed. Luke was a doctor. Luke was a doctor, exactly. So who wrote the Acts of the Apostles? Luke, right? And Luke was known that he was a doctor of his time. He was just the people like anybody got sick, anybody had an injury, something, he was the guy to go to with his whatever, probably little knowledge, probably yeah, take some oil, you know, hear some mint, you know, to, to, to drink, whatever. but he was known as a doctor, right? Um, so most likely because of his medical, you know, uh, mind, if I can say, he, he says that, uh, he, he, he's being more descriptive about this by saying, um, by saying his, his feet and ankle bones receive strength. So he leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking, leaping, praising God. Of course, I mean, if you never walked your whole life, don't you want to just like keep jumping and like, you know, uh, I mean, uh, uh, strain a guy, uh, uh, you know, a child for two seconds. What do you usually do right after you release them or let them go? They just, you know, keep jumping and every like they just want to do things. Now they they're free. Well, imagine somebody who has been forty years old, uh, forty years in all his life, um, and all the people saw him walking and praising God. Then they knew that it was he who said, begging alms at the beautiful gate of the temple, they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him, okay? So here a lot of people saw this and they were uh, um, um, uh, they were astonished. And of course, as we're gonna read later on that many people started joining them, started believing in, in, uh, in, in, you know, in what Peter and all the disciples were preaching. Um, who would like to read from 11 to 16, please? From 31116. I'll do it. Tundur, thank you. Now, as the lame man who was healed held on to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the porch, which is called Solomon's, greatly amazed. So when Peter saw it, he responded to the people, Men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? Or why look so intently at us? as though by our own power or godliness, we had made this man walk. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But you denied the Holy One and the just and asked for a murderer to be granted to you and killed the prince of life, whom God raised from the dead, of which we are witnesses. And his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. 
Yes, the faith which comes through him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of our all, of you all. Mm -hmm. So here, after people were marveled, thank you, Shemis, thank you. After people were marveled, surprised, and all of this, and Peter is like, what are you surprised about? What are you surprised? The guy referring to Jesus, he was among you, and he did all of these things. He did a lot of things, right? What does it say in uh, the Gospel of uh, Saint John at the end of Saint John? If all the, if all the miracles of Jesus Christ would have been recorded, all the happened? books in the world would not contain it. Exactly, no papers. So he's like, well, he did all of this for you, and, and you're surprised. You're surprised about the one that he came, that he, the God of our of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which means as the God of the Jews. Um, you know, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered up, denied in the presence of Pilate when he was even, and by the way, Pilate in the end, oh, and that's just on the side, um, was Pilate uh, with killing Jesus? He was like, I don't, I just can't find anything against him. You're just like, I don't, I mean, you're, you're telling me that he wants to be a king, but that, that doesn't, he doesn't look like any kind of a threat. Like, just you mind your business with him. And what did they say? No, 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 no. Your blood is on, you know, right? Don't, you know. And then, and here also on the side, what was Pilate's uh, biggest sin? Tina, I don't know. I saw your hand. He didn't listen. He didn't listen to his wife. <laughs> that's, it. that's pretty well now she's right that's kind of what i was gonna say so she said don't you know don't yeah, he, he's a righteous right? you're gonna let a murderer righteous. go and then you're gonna crucify this innocent man yes yes that, that yes. wasn't good yes yes mm -hmm. yeah, well this one they call it is the general sin for any man married man if you don't listen to your wife you're doomed period you know it's just that's the way it is that's the you know that's that's what it is um uh, so, father did yeah. you notice one thing all yeah. the screens where the ladies are they're shaking their <laughs> hands <laughs> and the man is just <laughs> can you can you say no can you dare to say no or like that was like, funny <laughs> Pablo, Pablo, as man you'll be like uh, uh plead i plead the uh, i plead the a losing battle deacon <laughs> it is a losing battle. Um, so his biggest sin. <laughs> well, Majid, I'm sorry, I didn't hear. I said even the ones without husbands are shaking their head. <laughs> it's a it's a known fact. <laughs> God bless you all. Um, um, but Pilate's biggest mistake, biggest sin, was that he was afraid of the crowd. He was afraid of the uh, like peer pressure, basically. That he gave up, like he could have, he had all kinds of power to say, no, just mind your own, but like he's not a threat. If anything, you know, just don't bother him, just go away, just I'm gonna release him and just, you know, um, and if anything, it's between you and them, you and him. But no, he was like, okay, you know, too much pressure. Do I want like, uh, um, shake my relationship with them and I don't want you know I'm a, just a governor here and that I don't want them to complain to my you know to the king and all of this like eh, might as well kill him what am I gonna lose you know and that was his biggest sin. that's his biggest sin. Uh, although he had the key to release it so now sometimes people say well um, the Jews had, didn't have anything to do with uh, death of Jesus. It's all the Romans, you know. And then Romans will say, "Oh, Pilate didn't have anything to do with his death. Uh, it's all the Jews." It's both, both. That's historically both, daily and theologically. Who killed Jesus? Who kills Jesus? Anytime we say us, daily, every you know, uh, ten thousand years ago or fifty thousand years to come. Okay, uh, at least theologically, that's how. Anytime we sin, the way we're killing Jesus. Jeff, Abu, yeah, I heard this wonderful thing one time that um, you know, Jesus wasn't killed in the Jewish way. You know, mm. he would have been stoned. You know, mm. Mm. he was killed in the Roman way, mm. and that was one of the things God used to spread Christianity through the Roman Empire because the Romans understood what a mm. crucifixion was and what that what that meant. Mm. That's, it's one of the most, it is the most humiliating way of death. It is the most humiliating way of death. 
Um, and that's why St. Paul says, you know, um, the cross for, for, uh, for some people, the cross is ignorance, but for us is what? It's pride and, you know, um, and victory in all of this. Um, um, uh, Father, but why they say mal'oonan man alluqa ala khashaba? Cursed. Uh, well, it, on the tree. Yeah, so, 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 so basically it has the, the, the meaning of whoever is on the cross is usually like the most humiliating as if like there is really a curse against you. Like it's like somebody who just really has some bad luck like not only dying you know but you know being murdered or being killed is just being killed on the cross but then it becomes it becomes in a way theologically you'll have some church fathers and some priests writing about this clergy writing about this that malurun a curse whoever is on the cross like you need to be careful you know what kind of cross you bear um, and it will be, it is a double edged sword. You cannot pretend that you're holding, you know, you have a cross. So it means you can't do something in public, but also in, uh, in the be in behind, you look like as if like you're holding a cross, but inside their inside your heart, you're not, you know, that means then you'll be cursed because then there will be, um, a, a judgment upon you. I think that that's one of the ways, uh, interpret Malunun, whoever is on the cross, but you know, but initially, just because it was the most humiliating, like it's like um, I don't know somebody, um, they say what a bad bad luck, uh, like what it didn't only this happen, it's actually something else happened even made it worse. Like wow, it can't be more bad luck than this. So it can't be more humiliating than this. Uh, so it's as if like really whoever. You know, whatever you, um, whoever happened to him, like how much hated or or, or rejected by the gods or by whatever, uh, um, uh, by God or by whatever religion that you were, you know, uh, um, following. Good, maybe yes, no. I'm sure we can find more and more interpretation of this. And uh, the only thing that comes to my to my mind is uh, there is in the Old Testament that uh, God will keep what well, you know hardship or whatever for the fourth generation. And a lot of times when families they have a bad apple, you know, in their family, they say, you know, maybe we are cursed or they take the blame on their shoulders and mm. it becomes, what did we do? And they start questioning, you know? Mm. So uh, how do we interpret uh, that uh, to us as uh, human uh, beings? Yeah, remember, remember what, we, what we read about the blind man a few weeks ago? That when he was asked, when when Jesus and his disciples saw the blind man, uh, and the the disciples asked him, "Who yeah. sinned? Who sinned? You? Or, I mean, him or his parents. parents?" And Jesus says, "Neither. It's it's for what? For the glory of God. It's for the glory of God." So yes, in the Old Testament, we have all these interpretations. We have all these things, but in the eyes of Christianity now, we don't see them. This way, we interpret them. Oh, okay. We interpret them by whatever you're struggling, whatever, whatever it is um, that somehow, if you can find a way to glorify God in this and see God in this, uh, from the most devastating, most humiliating struggle, death, whatever it is, to whatever, to the simplest struggle, it's like what you do with it. What happened to the blind man? He glorified God. Um, after he was his his eyes were were open, uh, but also also even if he wasn't like what you do with what you have with the condition you are in the end and that's how either you show God's uh, God's uh, um, God's power you see you know you glorify God or you don't regardless what you have. So we do not believe as Christians somehow Deacon Nicola upset God 
that means now Abir is going to somehow take the blame or take some kind of the punishment. We do not have that in Christianity. Um, it's just not. God would never punish anybody because of somebody else. Or allow just because of oh, everybody carries his own cross. <laughs> exactly. 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 Like it, it's never going to be that one. Um, I know there are a lot. I mean, I mean, look in our culture, even anytime something happened, we still have that thinking. Oh, well, didn't you think, you know, because his father did this. Well, you know, his grand, you know, his grandfather used to be this, or his you know, and God in a way. The way we understand it now, and I don't want to talk too much about this, so we can you know, we can dedicate some other time for yeah. it. Uh, God allows, in a way, somehow struggles, but he never creates them. Nothing that God kind of like creates. Um, uh, um, I mean, in the Old Testament, we read a lot about like God, now he allowed uh, or he sent, uh, uh, you know, uh, fire, he sent water, he sent thunderstorms, whatever. But in the end, the meaning is like he allows these things or he allowed them just because we are part of a fallen world. We're part of a fallen world uh, that he al allows sometimes bad things to happen, but he never... Like we can say, well, it's God's will, you know, for somebody to have cancer. Like, no, it's just not. We don't believe that. Maybe God could have done things that, you know, cured the person in a second or prevented the person to have cancer. But we don't. We don't say that God, you know, brought it in, you know, as a punishment. We say God somehow allowed it, let it go. Uh, because we live in a world, in a fallen world, there is sin, there is fall, there is death, there is sickness, all of these things. But what, what's more important to God is regardless what you, who you are, what you are, what you're doing, what you're struggling, how are you glorifying me? As, as much as you can. I mean, somebody who is probably uh, a blind or somebody who has cancer, like very, very sick, limited of what he probably can do or she can do compared to somebody fully functioning. You uh, froze up. Oh, I, I froze. Sorry. I, I Isn't can't. it important to learn from the struggle? Absolutely. Yes, yes, of course, of course, of course. Um, we learn, you know, you know, we strengthen ourselves, we we get closer. The whole point is like, how can we, with whatever we have, how can we make it, how can we make that goal is toward God, you know? How do we make it that we are steering the, you know, this to God? You know, Father, we're more than ever. Father, what about um, nations? You know, sometimes I wonder about, you know. What's on like, nation? Like a, co na countries, nations. Whether uh -huh. they, they suffer, you know, mm -hmm. collectively mm -hmm. if they go off a path or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, it's. I think it all falls under this. So, what do you mean, like, why nations instead of individuals? Or well, you know that. Yeah, that you know. I'm trying to. I don't know the scripture passage, but sometimes you know the Bible will talk about nations. You know, oh, under yeah, God, yeah, and, yeah. And, you know I see, how I they see. fare because they sometimes have their own fates. A nation will have a fate. Yeah, I see. I see. Because at the end, uh, like what happened in Nineveh and all of this, like with Job and all of this, it's just like, oh, we follow people who are just following the the king or whoever uh, is in charge. And they all kind of like go with it. So and that's means like all nations like, well, this all these people, they just like follow their leaders and did exactly, um, you know, they all did the same thing. And therefore, they're all, you know, they suffered the fall of like whatever they're struggling with but in the end where is god in this you know um like he told job if i'm not mistaken well there are a few people that they still worship you worship me so i don't want to you know uh, uh kill them uh, i don't want to like send my wrath to them and stuff so uh, at the end regardless of one or nations or it's just whatever you're struggling with what do you how do you uh, glorify god in it how do you glor glorify god in this it actually can be like just a whole study topic. And I'm sure there are um, uh, readings and all of this about this. Um, but that's at least to my knowledge, you know. Yes, maybe hope continue. Yes. Uh, yes Sodom and Gomorrah was probably an example from the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And it's like all of them. I mean, in the end, we say, well, God, in, in it, like God says, I'm going to send my wrath and all of this. And the way we interpret it, it's part of this is the, the this is the the outcome uh, of our fallen, you know, our sins, because they've done this somehow. They got punished for this. God did God order it? Does God want people hurt people? None of our literature says that. Not of our because if so, why do we say then God has the same love to the from you know has the same love for the most righteous to the most uh, 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 sinful person? You know if he does. Why would he punish like this? Uh, but sometimes it's like what we do to ourselves, you know. With you know, um, so with Sodom and Gomorrah, I don't. Know, I need to go like in depth more and see like how is that God? Like, is he really punishing, or is it somehow because of their sinfulness, because of their struggles, because whatever happened, just like an outcome? You know, sometimes they say. Um, uh, I don't know. I don't want to go too far in this, and I don't. I, I don't want to. Um, yeah, I don't think see how they could do that. Mm -hmm. I don't see how someone having cancer and and somebody had how did they get it? I mean, is it through the fact that they did something wrong that they no. got cancer? No, no, we don't, we don't, we don't say he that. Said that God has a wrath and that He punishes. So. No. No, in the old the language of the Old Testament, that's what it indicates. But in the New Testament, it does not indicate this. And in the New Testament, um, God does not never uh, uh, forces like never uh, uh, hit us with something bad. Like He's not gonna say, "Okay, um, John, you are a bad person. I'm going to make sure that you have." Uh, Cancer. I'm going to infect you with cancer or with whatever it is, because the fact that we have a lot of saints, so actually we know for a fact, that even contemporary one, who died from cancer in the church and their body is still surviving for many, 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 many years. And we know they're saints and we honor them and stuff. So it's not like because it's a punishment. Well, we don't know exactly how, but in a way, it's part of this fallen world, part of our sinfulness, that we are infected by these maladies, by these sicknesses, by these struggles. Uh, but the big point is, like I said before, what we do with what we have, what we do with what we're dealing with. You know, where is Jesus in this? Um, do I, if I get infected, you know, with cancer, do I um, start cursing God or I should then pray more, um, you know? As much as it's a struggle, and then you are going to get into some time, I'm sure some of you uh, who struggled with stuff like this, like you're asking God, why me? Why did you do this to me? Why, you know, all of this? And it's, you know, of course, I mean, it's part of our, I mean, of course, we ask questions. Our like, nature. You know, our nature to do that. But but at the end, what do I do Like for, like, what do I do with it? You know, I might have these doubts, but like maybe I should get closer to God, you know? And find a beauty with what I have, regardless how much devastate you know devastating thing it is. Um, but the um, actually now I remember there are you know I've heard once a sermon a priest was like I mean he's he's a very well known priest in the old country, and he's going like no God can inflict things and God then can do thing you know do bad things now I remember but like I don't know um, I'm sure there is some kind of um, um, like a division, if I can say, like about this, like we don't believe, you know, God is again loving, merciful. God is love, cannot be hate. So there's no way there's hate. I've heard people sometimes even say, I mean, I've talked to people that don't believe in God, and I say, well, why? And they say, because what kind of a God allows all these bad things to happen? Mm -hmm. But my answer to that is if you believe in God, then you also need to believe uh, that we have an adversary, Satan. Mm -hmm. We also have a bad guy that does things. Mm -hmm. that, and this, there's yeah. a whole lot of things in play, free will. You've got the good against the bad. And 
So exactly. it's not just God that does these things. It's exactly. also Satan that does these things. Exactly. We, are, we live in a world. And we of, get our, our faith tested all the time. Sometimes that could be why. Exactly. Exactly. Salim. Uh, Salim has his hands. Oh. Uh, can we say Christianity God doesn't take uh, action until Judgment Day, basically? Is that kind of a good conclusion or uh, meaning against evil? Is that, is that a good uh, kind of yeah, I think, uh, uh, conclusion or, or not? So I, well, we know now, I mean, in the end, that yes, in a way, but also we don't want to forget that uh, in the church, like as a priest, as a clergy, if I know, you know, Salim did something wrong, I still need to like, you know, talk to him about it. I can't just say, well, I'm not going to judge you. Don't worry, nothing till God will judge you. No, we still called in, in this world to work on ourselves, you know, um, but we work on ourselves with love and in patience and, and uh, humility. So yes, there might be consequences by saying like, I don't, you know, whatever, you know, Salim stole something, what, you know, or did something very offensive. Like, I, I can't just say, it's okay, keep coming to church, keep taking communion as if nothing happened and say, well, God, you know, in the second coming, he'll, he'll judge you. No, we still have a responsibility to repent. We still have to, uh, and there's a chance that we can change our life, you know, because if nothing is done, then what is the point of repentance, you know? You still have to show some kind of a change. Um, but your judgment, at the end of the day, the judgment, the last straw is the second judgment. Uh, is the, you know, the, the second coming. The last, there is nothing after this. Like, you, you know, before that, there is a way you can repent, you can all of this. That's why we say, you know, I, said, I told you before a quote, God can change the sinner you are but not the same that you pretend to be, right? God can change or can, God can help you, you know, change yourself. Like, by, you know, if, if you consider yourself a sinner, but if you consider yourself this righteous person and you're always good, God cannot do anything with you. If like somebody who has a lot of whatever, you know, refusing to go to the doctor, although he's, you can tell, I mean, if he doesn't go to the doctor, there's no way the doctor can help him. Um, but anyway, this is this is something we can definitely. I can, you know, if that's a that's a topic of interest, I can prepare for it better. Um, you know, what I mean, like what kind of su what, you know suffering, all of this. I think it's um, it will be a good topic to. Uh, um, I can ask Father Luke, Father Luke Tomi from Saint Peter and Paul. He's uh, he has a PhD in bioethics. Um, and he deals a lot with, uh, you know, all his dissertation, all his work about like suffering, you know, whose fault that is, you know, what is it, you know, how do we see these things? I can ask him one night if you guys want to join us and like do just a topic on this, you know, at least as we say in Arabic, right, you know, give your, uh, let the professional do their, I mean, his, that's what is his specialty, you know. And we can ask him, you know, even, you know, even if he burns half of it. E yes, <laughs> I mean, even if he takes half the profit, whatever, you know. Um, but you know, we can talk more about this. Um, uh, I just today, like at least, you know, the things without preparing anything. That's what I can tell you. Um, you know, with these, um, shall we continue? Um, and asked. Uh, but you denied the Holy One and the just and asked for a murderer to be granted to you and killed the Prince of Life, whom God raised from the dead, of which we are witnesses. What's his name? The guy who they let, uh, they asked to be released beside uh, 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 Barnabas. Barnabas, right? Barnabas. No, Barnabas or? Barabbas. 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 Okay, it's okay. I mean, their, their names are very close. And we're going to see Barnabas soon enough. We're going to start hearing his name soon enough. Uh, Barnabas. Okay, who would like to read from 17 to 26? If there is nobody, I volunteer. Uh, Rose raised her hand. I saw Jeff. Oh, go ahead, Rose. Rose, okay. I see. Jeff, you can do the second part. Or Jeff, please go ahead. Go I ahead, have, Jeff. 
I have a different, I have this one. So it's the translation's a little different, but it's. Oh, yeah. okay. But I'm, I can do, uh, I can read whatever you need me to read. Rose. Okay. Can you start with Rose and then you know. Yet, brethren, I know that you did it in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But those things which God foretold by the mouth of all his prophets, that Christ would suffer, he has thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send Jesus Christ, who was preached to you before, whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the word world began. For Moses truly said to the fathers, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren. Him you shall hear in all things, whatever he says to you. And it shall be that every soul who will not hear that prophet shall be utterly destroyed from among the people. Yes, and all the prophets from Samuel and those who follow, as many <laughs> as have spoken, have also foretold these days. You are sons of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying to Abraham, and in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. To you first, God, having raised up his servant, Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning every one of you from your inequities. Mm -hmm. so, so in this paragraph, in those verses, Peter now, after they were astonished, after they were like, you know, surprised what happened and all of this, and kind of Peter in the beginning told them like, you guys did this and you did this and you did this to him. And he's like, okay, let me soften it a little bit, you know? And he's saying, I'm like, okay. And that's why he called them, what did he say now? Yet now, brethren, you know, brothers and sisters. It's not like he's calling them enemies or anything. Like, no, you need to realize your mistake. But God is merciful. God is love. All of this, if there is time for you, you can come convert, repent, start a new life. And at the end of the day, he goes back to remind them, in the end of the day, that this Jesus that we're telling you who he is, is the one... All the prophets, not only Moses, not only David, not only Abraham, all of them spoke about him that this is what's going to happen. So uh, um, uh, I know that you did it in ignorance, and as did also your rulers. But those things which God foretold by the mouth of all these prophets that the Christ would suffer, he has thus uh, fulfilled. Repent. You know, he's like, okay, don't you read in your books all of these things that all the, those prophets and everybody spoke about, you know, uh, about this Jesus. Well, look at them. They are fulfilled now. They, they, they are. This is it. This is the guy. So now repent, you know, convert and become, you know, start a new life with, you know, in Jesus Christ. So that's uh, mainly uh, this, this paragraph. Any questions about it? Okay. We can. Yeah. Hey, tell me, Jeff. The Farley guy, you, he compares it to what happened to Joseph when his brothers mm. sold him into slavery. Mm. That's good. It's a terrible thing, but then good, good came of it. Good thing turned from it, right? And um, that's why um, uh, we, uh, who do we commemorate the first day of uh, Holy Week? First day of Holy Week, we commemorate Joseph. Joseph. Joseph of Egypt. Joseph was the one out of the 12 siblings who was the youngest and most loved by his father. And then his other 11 brothers, what did they do to him? They got so jealous and they tried to kill him. And then when they, you know, they, they, didn't, they didn't kill him, what did they do? They sold him, right, as a slave to some people going to end up going to Egypt. And, and then what happened after this? He was yeah, like, imagine somebody who was like, Rejected by his by his uh, uh, family in a way, um, got almost killed, got sold as a slave. All of this, all these like like Jeff is mentioning, all of these put in like, jail, put in jail. Well, before they put it in jail, what well, anyway? Put it in jail and all of this. Exactly. I mean, all of these we can you know, um, all of this, and then he became what? 
like he became almost like a prime the minister. The second person, yeah. He became like a prime minister to the uh, to the to Pharaoh, and he was able to help his family again. And what did he do when you know they could they didn't have, have uh, there was a famine around the time he was with. Uh, there was a, a a famine, and then uh, what happened? That he helped his his family and everything. So like Jeff said, he turned the bad thing. There's something awful, it, you know, it was turned to what a beautiful thing. So you people, yes, you did an awful thing, but it's actually turned out also very beautiful because by then, by this, Christ dying for us, he redeemed, you know, Christ being on the cross and dying, you know, for us and raised from the dead, he became, he gave everybody now another chance. So what started bad ended up being very beautiful. Not to justify that they should have, oh, yeah, good, you know, thank God we killed him. But it's okay. God even looked at the bad thing, and um, uh, uh, and he also um, uh, made something good out of it. And Matthew would like to say hello. <laughs> Is that like you, H.T.? <laughs> okay. Is uh, it time? Fact, uh, Aruna, uh, 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 she's getting uh, Just watched the movie last night. The Which similar movie? story a young man, a uh, brother of eight, called Ram. Oh. You know the story of Ram? It's a biblical one. Uh -huh. Yeah, it is It is similar. He left, uh, they sold him to the to Egypt, to, to the pharaohs, and then he became rich and went back and saved them. <laughs> so, oh. Ram, the, it's a biblical story. Ram, uh, the name of the movie was uh, the... Um, uh, I don't know, but it's not the subject is not around a different thing, but it is the similar Jamil, story. Jamil, text me the name when you get a chance, please. Yes, I will do that. I, will do that. I would love to look into it. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, so that's what it is, you know. Uh, okay, how about it's time to go nani nani? Can you say good night, everyone? And say good night. You know, say good night. I love you all. See you all, God willing, on Sunday. Good night, Matthew. Good night. Good night. Yeah. Bravo. Go and take a video. Go and take a video. Take a video for all this. It's always when when it's bedtime. It's like no, I need to still do this. I need to do. Not sure I'm not starting. So that was. It was the immigrant about the immigrants. Just the immigrant. Yeah, the immigrant. Immigrant on Netflix. The immigrant on Netflix. The immigrant. Who would like to, well, any more questions about this part? Who would like to do? The next part is 4.1.12. Jeff, if you want to read it from the book, it's fine. I have the same. I mean, it's whoever, you know, it's a, it's different wording, but we, we all get the, the same meaning. 4.1 to 12. 4.1 to 12, please, yes, yes. And as they were speaking to the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees um, came up to them, being annoyed because they were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection from the dead and they laid hands on them and put them in jail until the next day for it was already evening but many of those who had heard the word believed and the number of the and the number of the men came to be about five thousand and it happened on the next day that they there were gathered together in jerusalem their rulers and elders and scribes and annas the high priest and caiaphas and John and Alexander, and as many who were of high priestly descent. And when they had stood them in the middle, they were inquiring, in what power or in what name have you yourselves done this? Then Peter, having been fulfilled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers and elders of the people, if we ourselves are being investigated today for a benefit done to an ailing man as to how this man has been saved, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, whom you yourselves crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by this name, this man stands before you healthy. 
The one is the stone which was disdained by you, the builders, which became the head of the corner. And there is not in any other the not in any other the salvation, for there is no other name under heaven that has been given among men by which it is necessary for you to be saved. Mm, bro, thank you. Thank you, Jeff. So in this part we see now there's like now some kind of a persecution, right? Now they're being arrested, now being they are uh, rubbing the, the Jews in a in a, a bad way, you know, in the wrong way. Um, now they're like, hmm, what are these followers are doing? They're gaining people after them. And, uh, and now instead of following us, the Sadducees and the Pharisees and all of these, uh, you know, high priests, Jewish high priests. Now they're like, oh, after these poor, ignorant, illiterate people. Right. So now as they spoke to the people, the priest, the captain, the temple, yada, yada, being greatly disturbed that they taught the people and preached in Jesus, the resurrection of the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in custody. They just right away arrested them and put them in prison. They're just like, this is unacceptable in a way. However, many of those who heard the word believed and the number around 5,000 people. 5,000 people started uh, following um, uh, the, new, the, the disciples. And it came to pass on the next day that the rulers, elders, and scribes, as well as Annas, the high priest, he's naming all these like high, uh, high priests in the uh, uh, for historical fact, um, were gathered together in Jerusalem, and when they had set them in the midst, they asked, "But what, by what power or by what name have you done this?" And of course, Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, "Filled with the Holy Spirit, it's not like you know. By the way, somehow he got a um, a new Pentecost. You know what I mean? Like it's not like uh, a new you know tongue of fire came upon him or something. Like no, the Holy Spirit is is in him." from the day, you know, from the day of Pentecost. It means now, like, he is utilizing the spirit that God gave him. So now he's going, and he's like, okay, I'm going to answer you. Rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means has he has been made well? Let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands here before you whole. And the, the whole thing is basically saying, okay, he's like, probably it would be a foolish argument just to keep telling them, well, look, especially for those scribes, well, look, that's what your books say. You know, this is, you know, Jesus is here to fulfill the, uh, you know, Jesus, like, look at these prophecies here. Um, uh, uh, you know, here's what it says. Look, Jesus fulfilled this. I mean, they're the ones who know the books left and right and up and down and from one cover to another. Like he can't, and they're not accepting that point. Uh, they're accepting that argument that, well, look at the Old Testament is pointing out to Jesus Christ. So what kind of way he he approached them with? He approached them with the way what of like, hold on a second. Before, I'm not going to go, you know, what the Old Testament says and all of this. He tells the people this. But those ones that claim that they know all the books, he's like, okay, are we judged because we did something good? Obviously, raising somebody, like, given, you know, the power for somebody to walk again, right? That's something good. Is it bad? No, no one says, no one is going to say, if somebody is being healed of something, that means that's bad. And especially in that mentality at that time, no, if you're good, that means God is with you, God who's given you this. And if you're bad, like, you can't walk, you can't see, you can't do whatever, then you're bad. That's the devil, you know, or God, you know, punished you for this. So the fact that this guy went from a bad situation to a good situation, well, and who who did we do it by? And, you know, Peter says, who do I uh, heal him by? He says, by what means he has been made well? Let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands here before you all. So he's saying, well, wouldn't you want to consider this guy, Jesus Christ, at least? The one who raised, you know, in his name, I was able to raise, uh, to heal this guy from his uh, problem. So he's saying, he's going into this another corner instead of saying, well, this is the fulfillment of the Old Testament because it just never worked with the scribes and the, with the high priest. So he comes to, from a way to tell them, well, uh, I did something very good. I did something that actually beneficial. That means it's from God, but I did it in the name of this Jesus Christ. That means 
Jesus Christ is somebody who has favor with God. So therefore, nor is, um, this is the stone which was rejected by your by your builders, which has become the chief cornerstone, uh, cornerstone, nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. So he's telling that, like, hmm? this is, G, you know, here's the, here's the one that you guys uh, um, uh, rejected, but I raised this man, I, I healed this man because of Jesus Christ, the one that you, uh, um, uh, the one that you um, um, rejected and killed. Any questions about that part? Father, is the cornerstone, is it the same that is the fulfillment of Daniel's uh, that is uh, fell, it's going to be cut and f uh, fell on the uh, feet and crush it across the, uh, whatever, the statute? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so, because it's referring to be to Christ. Exactly. Hajar al alladhi radhalahu al Sara. You know, um, so basically that's you know, exactly that's in the end. That's what holds the whole building, you know. Um, so the, this guy that you guys rejected, but look what he's doing. And on him, you know, and because of him, salvation is going to come. There's a whole new world now. Um, can we do uh, 4.13.22? 13.22. Any volunteers? I can read if nobody's raising their hand. Thank you. Thank you, Tina. Go ahead. 13 to 22. Yes, ma'am. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus and seeing the man who had been healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commit commanded them to go outside out of the council, they conferred among themselves saying, what shall we do to these men? For indeed that a noble miracle, a notable miracle had been done through them is evident to all who dwell in Jerusalem. And we cannot deny it. But so that it spreads no further among the people, let us severely threaten them that from now on they speak to no man in the name. Can you continue to oh, talk? Continue. I'm sorry. So they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor to teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said to them, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to more than God, than to God, you judge. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So when they had further threatened them, they said they let them go, finding no way of punishing them because of the people, since they all glorified God for what he had been done. For the man was over 40 years old on whom this miracle of healing had been performed. Mm -hmm. So in this part of, um, of the Acts, um, uh, first they were astonished, right? Those scribes and high priests, like here's Peter, who probably doesn't even know how to write his own name. These um, poor people, these uneducated, um, and look how, how much boldness and how much argumentative, like they have the right arguments, right? So they're like kind of, you know, that's why it says they were astonished um, and they were marveled. And they realized that they had been with Jesus, right? And then seeing the man, and then looking at the man, they could no, couldn't say nothing against him. Like, yeah, what, how, how do they? Get? Peter is telling them, "Well, look, this guy was really sick, was really struggling with something. Now he's healed. Now he's look, look, he can leap and dance and jump and all this. Like, shouldn't we be happy about it?" So it's like they couldn't have anything back, you know, to to um, uh, uh, you know to complain or to return the argument. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they comforted among themselves, saying, what shall we do to this man? For indeed, that a notable miracle has been done, right? Something really, and we cannot deny it. But so that it spreads no further among the people, let us severely threaten them, that from now on they speak to no man in this name. I mean, so they were so blinded by their power. You know, these scribes, they thought, you know, these high priests, Sadducees, uh, uh, Pharisees, Sanhedrins, all these like different sects of Judaism and different parts of Judaism, they were so full of themselves that they thought there's they knew everything. Like they don't. It's just like we know better. Everybody else is second citizen below us. 
whatever we tell people, that's it. We know more than anybody else. We, and that's why they couldn't. I mean, they're struggling. Like, well, it's a miracle. This is something good. But like for them, what does that mean? That Like now we're going to follow Jesus of Nazareth, this guy who was a carpenter. We want a king. We want somebody to liberate us. There is no way that's, you know, that this Jesus Christ is our new Messiah. Because according to what we know and what we interpret, you no, know, he has to be the king. He has to be all of these things. Um, so, um, so they were just so blinded by their ego and blinded by their positions. Uh, that's all they, they. That's all they get. What they can see. Uh, we have. Oh, everybody now. Is it, who's crying? Why are you crying? Okay, okay. You can stand here and just like listen. Um, um, so th that's why um, they. But they still wanted them somehow to threaten the people. To, to threaten a Peter and John uh, and let them uh, basically somehow get rid of them. Just go, just leave, leave us alone. Uh, let us, you know, m mind your own business. Let us mind our own business because we don't want, we don't want any, uh, um, you know, we don't want to uh, uh, um, jeopardize any of our position, what we do with the power we have, the money we have and all of this. Um, so they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said to them, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than God, to, to, to God, you judge. He's like, oh, do I listen to God or do I listen to you? What do you, what will you do? Well, of course, I'm going to listen to God. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go. Why did they let them go? Why did he kill them right away? Because they were they were afraid of the people. Exactly, there were like a lot of people around them uh, that they actually started believing, and they didn't. You know, they were afraid for the reaction of the people. So basically, now they're playing the role of pilot. You know, in a way, like okay, we don't want to. Not not that you know they you know by arresting Peter and John or, or you know, killing them, it's something good, but the, the, they were just afraid of jeopardizing the situation. So that's why they, uh, they just let them go, uh, threatening them, but they couldn't do anything more, more serious because they were afraid of the people. Like all these people are, oh, that seems the right. We saw something good. That means whoever they're preaching about, we need to follow them. Because I guess we got something better than what we're getting from the, you know, uh, the, uh, you know, from the Jewish uh, high priest. You know, none of the Jewish high priests are uh, healing men. None of them are, you know, opening eyes, uh, opening uh, the eyes of a blind people. Any of this? You know, any question about this part? It's like good, like these parts, like like uh, stories. You know what I mean? Stories, but here and there that you'll have like points down. That we can discuss. Uh, can can anybody read from twenty three to thirty one? Twenty three to thirty one. Nancy, go ahead. Nancy, thank you. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> and being let go, they they went to their own companions and reported all that the chief priest and elders had said to them. So when they heard that, they raised their voice to God in one accord and said. Lord, you are God, who made heaven and earth and the sea, and all that is in them, who by the mouth of your servant David has said, Why did the nations rage and the people plot vain things? The kings of the earth took their stand, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For truly against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together to do whatever your hand and your purpose determined before to be done. Now, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness, they may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Mm -hmm. 
any questions about just tell us what happened after uh, they uh, you know this this encounter with the Jews with the high priest um, and then they praised God they saw like how the fulfillment of the Old Testament that they uh, uh, they know that they're going to be persecuted there will be a lot of people who are just like against them uh, they're going to uh, you know struggle with all of you know struggle with all of this. Um, uh, and then it's interesting, it says, and when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled, assembled together was shaken. We, um, we think that it was which place? That they always went back to where? At least when they're still in Jerusalem. Um, where they to, met Jesus. To the upper room? But to the upper room, uh, where they had the, the supper with, you know, the, the, the last supper. And uh, Abuna, this is Peter. This is Peter who denied Jesus like three times, just like a couple weeks or months before. Mm -hmm. And now mm -hmm. he's, you know, standing up to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And look what, you know, again, uh, like this, his sin was not nothing different than Judas' sin. Peter's sin was nothing different than Judas' sin. And Peter denied Jesus. He really denied him as if he doesn't exist. And Judas, in a way, denied him and sold him, right? But the difference between Judas and Peter, as I said multiple times, Peter changed his life. Really, he went like Jeff is saying, like in a way, 180 degrees. Here's the guy who denied Jesus, and now he's like spearheading, uh, uh, talking about Jesus and spreading, uh, you know, teach, uh, the, uh, Christ's teachings. And he's the one, all, I mean, in the end, he receives, uh, uh, you know, he gets... Uh, executed and it's an also in a humiliating way as you know how do we do we know how peter was killed he asked to be hung on the on the cross upside down mm -hmm. he's like so it's even worse worse than a you know it's like the most humiliating thing is being uh crucified right uh, and uh, like he was like okay crucify me upside down because i don't deserve the same death that you know my Lord took when he was in the body here. It's just, you know, and this is the guy who had a whole change of, you know, he realized what he's done and how he changed his life. And Okay, how about 32? Any other questions about this part? How about 32 to the end, to uh, 37? Any volunteers? Any volunteers? I can read. Okay, Majida, go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Majid. Do you want to do it? No, no, go ahead. Okay. Um, giving for the common good. Now the multitude of those who believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither did anyone say that any of the things he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. And with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Nor was there anyone among them who lacked, all who were possessors of lands, houses sold them, things that were sold, and laid them at the apostles' feet, and they distributed to each and to anyone who had need. And Joseph, who was also named Barbara, Barnabas, by the apostles, which translated son of the encouragement, Olivet of the country of Cyprus, having land sold it, brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. So now, um, uh, uh, now the. Do not press anything. Uh, now the multitude of those who believed were on one heart. So basically now that they're all, you know, together, they're all in one heart. As it says in the beginning, remember in back, uh, in the, the Acts of the Apostles says that they're all were on same heart praying and glorifying God. But what happened now, they, um, neither did anyone say that any of the things he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. Uh, I don't know if uh, Sam or Father, you're muted. Don't touch it anymore. Um, I think Sam, uh, Sam uh, Nancy's uh, uncle, 
um, Nancy's uncle says that it's a Christian communism, uh, uh, or I don't know if Wasim maybe either Wasim uh, or or, uh, or Sam said it. It's a Christian communism. We're like, no, they're like, I have something. Nancy does not have something. It's like, oh, let me share what I have, and that's how they live. Uh, you know th that kind of life that they live, that they just shared everything like one. Uh, they're just like one body. You know. Uh, everything you know it's um, uh, everything they they just shared everything uh, together uh, but also uh, um, um, it's 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 important uh, why does he mention only Barnabas he mentioned now and Joseph who was also named Barnabas by the apostles uh, a Levite of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it and brought it, uh, brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Anybody? Um, so just now he's like more of like going specifically to one person. Was it because he was a very rich man or? Uh, he, he, there are, there were other ones that they were rich, but he single, you know, he mentions him um, for a reason that we're gonna see, um, uh, we're gonna see later that. Uh, um, so not only the people of Israel, people of other countries too are contributing. Mm -hmm. But also here, I'm just gonna. Um, uh, the wife is going to characterize which all the mentions him in the place in um, because uh -huh. so because he's going to play a role in uh, converting uh, Paul um, uh, Barnabas Barnabas now is going to play a role with Ananias, with another guy who made the conver conversion. Um, uh, he, uh, he plays a big role with now uh, with the conversion of Paul. That's, uh, that's why he, mentioned, he singles him out. Um, it does say in the book here, it is, it is also possible that Barnabas' example uh, inspired Ananias and Sapphira to sell the property since they wanted to be similarly esteemed. Um, um, so we, we're going to read about it in the, um, the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9, 26, 27. It mentions about, um, about uh, uh, Barnabas and Ananias and all of, you know, whoever was involved. Uh, uh, in, Father? In the community. Is he trying to refer to show them, you know, because when people were selling their properties and bring it to, on the feet to the, of the disciples, uh, Zephania and her husband, they came, they hid some of the money and they came and told the, you know, that this is how much we sold the property and he fell and he died, you know, you know and then his wife came in and she lied too. As, and then the disciples told her, you lie to the Holy Spirit, then, you know, uh, take her and her and her whole entire family were wiped out. So may, does it have a correlation to that? I don't know. The whole, well, we know the whole point of here, maybe, I mean, it's just to make sure that don't, you know, give everything, you know, in the end, it's better than not to have anything. Then have everything, but you don't like you don't you don't uh, uh, work you don't uh, you don't you don't offer you don't help. Um, but here it's more. I don't. I mean, we can definitely I think make a connection. But the main point here is telling them like, it's not anymore. There is no more anymore. Well, there is no more difference like before. Where like here's the rich, here's the uh, the poor. I keep you know it was not that common before to just like give money and like share for, you know, share uh, um, uh, 
share your fortune with you know with people. No, no. <laughs> knock knock. Hi, knock, hi. knock, knock, knock. No, no. Who's there? <laughs> Forgive me. They just, they just took advantage of Alexis working downstairs and um and they're supposed to be in bed now. But uh, Sonia, to your bed, please. Yellow. No, my love. No, Yella. To your, to the bed, please. Yellow. Um it's more to point making the point that it's now um everybody saw each other the same way there was no more ranks no more, everybody is the same everybody is the same in, in the eyes of god and um, any other questions that's not nice they're all they're, you know they just i'm not here you're just screaming and i can't hear them and they can't hear me that's not nice how about you say I'm, I'm sorry? Hi. You say I'm sorry? Because that's not nice. No. You can stand here, but you can't just like. I'm not. I'm not. No, no, no. no we're not doing not, not jokes. <laughs> anyway. Not, not. So who's there, Daddy? Who's there? Daddy? there. Who's there? Isabel. Who's who? Isabel. Oh, Isabel? Isabel not working. Isabel, Sonia said, Isabel not working. The bell is not working. Ding dong. <laughs> Ding dong. <laughs> Ding dong. Ding dong. Ding dong. Ding dong. Uh, Auntie Rosalie, don't be in I was going to say she's. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, baby. You're precious. Uh, anyway, that's what I have for chapter four, uh, three, and four um, concerning uh, concerning the uh, the acts of the apostle. Next week, God willing, I cannot. We cannot have one just because we're going to be at the PLC, the Parish Life Conference at the Ethiopian Village. Uh, we'll be there. Uh, I will be there from Thursday morning. I'm supposed to go to Wednesday to um, a church to represent His Eminence at an uh, in defense of Christian uh, event and prayer service. Um, and then Thursday morning, I drive, you know, in. Angela's going to drive to the village with our Bible Ball team. Rose, are you also driving uh, Sophia too? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so let's go in there. Uh, pray for our uh, uh, Bible Ball team. We actually have a practice. Uh, They're going to win. In a few minutes. Well, I'm just Inshallah. God, Inshallah. God willing. God willing. It does, they, are already, they are already winners. That's right. They're already winners. Yes, they are. Amen. <laughs> Yeah. Any other questions? Stop recording. Oh, no, no. Will you close us in a prayer and then I can stop the recording? Yes, me. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and through ages of ages. Amen. More honorable than the cherubim and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim. Thou without corruption bearest God the word and our truly Theotokos. We magnify thee through the intercessions of our Holy Father, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. Amen. Thank you.